Here is a Simmons SDS EPB, or Simmons Digital Sampler and EEPROM Blower. So if you've been wanting to get your EEPROMs blown, then this is the tool that you need. What it is, is a very basic sampler that then can burn your samples onto uh, memory chips, EEPROM chips, of one of two types. And then you can load these chips into your SDS7, SDS9, SDS1, and maybe some other units that I'm not aware of. To use the SDS EPP, you're going to need a few things. One, obviously, is something to sample, and obviously a way to play the sound back. You'll also need blank EEPROMs. Always a good idea to have a programmed EEPROM that's got a sound on it so that you know that it's working. And you need something like this, an EEPROM eraser, so that you can erase your chips, which you'll be doing pretty often. So let's just get into the basics of how this works. We'll turn it on, and it makes a little sound when it starts. So I'm going to first start with a Simmons chip from my SDS7, and that's the Bright Tom. I'll place it into the ZIF socket, and push the little flag down, but before I do that, I want to double check and make sure that this switch between safe and blow is set to safe. If it's set to blow, you can damage the chip. So it's set to safe. I'm happy with that. I can push my little flag switch down and I have it set to play mode. So to play the sound on the chip, I press start. And that's it. And I can change the sample speed. that knob. Kind of fun. I also have the option of looping the sample by flipping this loop switch and hitting start. And it won't stop until I turn it off of loop. Okay. The next switch to the left of that is save. We're not going to get to that quite yet. So I'm going to start preparing to record my own sample. I'm going to take my good chip out. I'm going to put in a hopefully blank chip and throw it in. And let's check to see if there are any sounds there. Nope, nothing. Good. All right, I have a sample of an analog snare that's just doing a loop. So you can't hear it right now. Let me route this to the speakers. There we go. Just a simple analog type of snare from a Yamaha uh, CS40. So that sound is being routed to here. And I'm going to press record. So record is what allows me to actually get stuff into RAM. The EPB has its own RAM. So if you notice down here, there's a clip light and it's starting to clip. So I want to get that level. I personally like it when it's clipping just the slightest amount just so I know that it's there. That's fine. I want to set my sample speed. I can set it to whatever I want. So if I want to have something really grungy, I'd set the sample speed to low. If I want to be able to drop the pitch quite a bit, I'd set the sample speed to high. But for now, I'm just going to set it right in the middle. I have two different methods of sampling. One is where I just manually push the button and sample it. So I'll give that a try. And notice there's no sound coming through. It's not until I hit start that something will actually happen. So I did just record that. And let's hit play and see what it sounds like. It's not bad. Kind of cool. But the other option is to use a triggered start. I'm going to hit ready, and it will record once the triggering level is hit. Let's see how that one sounds. It's not bad. I'm going to do a couple more tries. That one was good. Pretty good. 
Okay, so now I can save this on my EEPROM. I'm going to click Save. And I'm going to set it to Blow. So now it's ready to record. Now that's on Blow. And hit Start. So what it's doing is burning this sample onto the EEPROM. Is it going to work? I don't know. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Sometimes it takes a few tries to get it to work correctly. All right, let's see if it worked. Hey, it did. So I've got a program chip. And then what I want to do is I want to put a label on top of that. I'm not going to put a label on this one, but here's an example. It's a TR-707 kick that I've burned myself. The last interesting feature is that you can also use this as a drum sound. So, using a drum pad, Roland in this case, instead of uh, Simmons, I'm going to hook it up to the external trigger input. There we go. So I'm triggering it with this pad. Pretty fun. The last feature on here is external select, which connects to a computer interface, which as far as I know there's nothing that's built for it. You'd have to build your own cable to connect it and then write your own software. It won't even let me do it because that just doesn't exist. I'm going to turn this off of safe. Uh, let's turn this back to safe. I should have turned it back to safe a while ago. But I've got my sample. And everything works. Yay!